Hello, it's Matthew here, and we're looking at question six, which is a 30 mark question on sequences and series. So we have to find the value of t1, which is the first term in this arithmetic sequence. We have the general term for the sequence up here, and the general term can be kind of thought of like a formula. So if you want to find the fifth term, you put in five for n into the general term. If you want to find the sixth term, put in six for n in the general term, and so on. So the question wants us to find the first term. So T1 is the first term, T2 the second term, T3 the third term, and so on. So we have to find the first term. So we're going to put in 1 for n. Just to point out that sometimes you are asked to work out the general term yourself. If you are asked to do that, there is a formula to do that on page 22 of the formula and tables book. But let's continue. So T1 is equal to minus 254 plus 1 minus 1 by 4. So 1 minus 1 is obviously 0 which gives us minus 254 plus 0 times by 4. So 0 by 4 is just 0. So that leaves us with T1 is equal to minus 254. So minus 254 is the first term in this sequence. Now let's have a look at part 2, where we're asked to work out the value of the common difference for that sequence. We're told that that's equal to T2 minus T1. You're not always told that the common difference is equal to T2 minus T1. You can think of the common difference like the term minus the term before that. So it's the difference between each term, basically. So for example, if I had a sequence 1, 3, 5, the common difference is obviously 2. So you can see, to work out the common difference, you just minus each term from the term before it. So it's telling us to do t2 minus t1, but you could also do t4 minus t3 or t3 minus t2. You should get the same answer every time if it's an arithmetic sequence, which we're told this one is. We're going to stick with t2 minus t1, but if you want to try t3 minus t2 yourself, or t4 minus t3, you can, and you should get the same answer. So we've already worked out t1 in a part 1, and that was minus 254. Now let's work out t2 and take away t1 from t2. That will give us the answer for a part 2. So it's minus 254 plus 2 minus 1 by 4, which gives us minus 254 plus 1 by 4. So that gives us minus 254 plus 4, and that's equal to minus 250. So now we can take minus 254 away from minus 250. So now it's minus 250 minus minus 254. So you have a double minus here. And remember, when you have two minuses beside each other like this, that turns into a positive. So essentially, what we have here is minus 250 plus 254, and that's equal to 4. So therefore, the common difference is equal to 4. So parts 1 and 2 of A were worth a combined 10 marks, or 5 marks each. So there are answers for A part 1 and 2. Now let's have a look at part B. And this is an algebra question where we're asked to find the smallest value of n in this inequality. Something to point out is that n must be a natural number. That's what this means. So the capital N there stands for a natural number. And the natural numbers are the whole positive numbers. So basically, the numbers you start counting with when you're a child... So you start with 1, 2, 3 and work your way up. It's not 0 and it's no minus number and it also can't be a fraction. So you can just start with 1, 2, 3, 4. Think of the numbers you would learn to count with when you were younger. It doesn't have an end, so it doesn't end at any particular number. It just goes on and on and on. But it just must be a whole number, so that's not a fraction and it must not be negative or 0. So that would be important at the end of this question for the answer. So the first thing to do is to multiply out n minus 1 by 4. So n minus 1 by 4 is going to be n by 4, which is 4n, and then minus 1 by 4 which is going to be minus 4. So that gives us minus 254 plus 4n minus 4. Now we have two like terms here. And when I say like term, I mean two terms that we can add together. So we can't add the 4n with any other number as there's no other number there that has an n in it. So that means it's impossible to add it to the minus 4 or to the minus 254. However, we do have two terms without any n or any variable at all. That's minus 254 and minus 4. That means these can be added together. So minus 254 minus 4 is going to give us minus 258. So we get minus 258 plus 4 n is bigger than 0. So to find the value for n, I want to have all my n terms on one side and all the terms without an n on the opposite side. So I'm going to keep my 4 n on the left hand side and I'm going to move my minus 258 over to the right hand side. So when I move that across the inequality, the same rules apply as if it was an equals to sign. So remember, when you're moving a minus across the equals to sign or an inequality like this one, the symbol must change from either plus to minus or minus to plus. So therefore, I get 4n is greater than 
plus 258. So now to work out the value for n, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So remember, whenever you're trying to solve a question or find the value of n or be it x or y, whatever it is, and you're left with a number before that particular letter, just divide both sides by that number and you'll be left with the n or the x or the y, whatever it is, is equal to your answer or is greater than your answer or smaller than your answer, but that will give you what you're looking for. So I'm going to divide both sides here by 4. So we have 4n divided by 4. That just gives us n. And you can see now how it's going to give us n is greater than and then whatever it is that we're looking for, the answer. And that's going to be 258 divided by 4, which is equal to 64.5. So we found that n is greater than 64.5. However, remember up here at the start, n must be a natural number. So we're going to have to round this to the nearest natural number. And the nearest natural number to 64.5 is going to be 65. So therefore the answer is n greater than 64.5 front to the nearest whole number is going to be 65. So therefore the answer is n equal to 65. And that question is worth 10 marks. Now let's have a look at part C, the final part of this question. So we're asked to solve the following equation for n, which is again a natural number. So this is the sum of the first n terms of a sequence. If you are ever asked to find the sum of the first n terms of a sequence, you can work out this formula. If it's not given to you, you'll be able to work it out on page 22 of your formula and tables book. So we're going to have to solve for n here, which basically means to find a value for n. So at the end of the question, we should have n equal to some number. So I'm going to multiply this out and see what we get. To solve a question, you must have an equals to sign. So if it doesn't have an equals to sign there, then it probably isn't a question asking you to solve. But as it does, and it tells us to solve, we should end up with n equal to some number at the end. It does also say that n cannot be zero. So it's possible that we may end up with two answers, one of them being zero, but the answer is just going to be whatever number isn't zero. So let's multiply it out. So first of all, I'm going to do 2 by minus 254. And 2 by minus 254 is going to be minus 508. I'm going to do the part in the brackets first. So once again, we have two like terms here, and that's minus 508 and minus 4. As neither of those have n's, and there's no other term with an n inside the bracket. That means that both of them can be added together. And minus 508 minus 4 is going to give me minus 512. So I get n over 2 outside of minus 512 plus 4n is equal to 0. So now I have to multiply out n over 2 by minus 512 plus 4n. And n over 2 by minus 512 is going to give me minus 512n over 2. And then n over 2 by 4n will give me 4n squared over 2. And that's all equal to 0. Now the first thing to do here is I'm going to get rid of the fractions. And to get rid of fractions like these, to be left with two whole numbers... We're going to multiply both fractions by the lowest common denominator. As both of these fractions have the same denominator, which is 2. So you'll have to multiply every term by 2, even the terms that aren't fractions. So here we just have 0 that isn't a fraction, and obviously 0 by 2 is still 0. However, if you do have another number that isn't a fraction, you will also multiply that by the lowest common denominator, which in our case here is 2. So we're going to start with minus 512n over 2 multiplied by 2. Now, whenever you multiply a fraction by the denominator, so whenever you multiply a fraction by the number on the bottom, your answer will just be the number on the top. So essentially here, our answer will be minus 512n. So that's a maths tip for you there. So if you ever multiply a fraction by the number on the bottom of the fraction, you'll be left with the number on the top, the numerator of the fraction, which in my case here is minus 512n. And the same thing applies for 4n squared over 2. Multiply that by the denominator, which is also 2 will leave me with 4n squared, and 0 by 2 is obviously 0. So now to solve for n, we're going to have to factorize. And the factorization method here that we're going to use is the highest common factor method. It's the only method that will actually work here. So we're trying to get the highest common factor between minus 512n and 4n squared. And the highest common factor, the HCF of minus 512n plus 4n squared is going to be 4n. So that means we can take the 4n outside. And 4n into minus 512n is going to leave me with minus 128. And then 4n into 4n squared is going to leave me with n. So then I get 4n outside of minus 128 plus n is equal to 0. So from this I can say that 4n is equal to 0. And minus 128 plus n is also equal to 0. So 4n equal to 0. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Which gives me n is equal to 0. 
and then on the right hand side I get minus 128 plus n is equal to zero. So I'm going to move the minus 128 over to the right hand side. And that will turn to plus as whenever you move a number across the equal sign it changes from plus to minus or minus to plus. So then I get n is equal to plus 128. And we're told at the start of the question that n cannot be equal to zero. So therefore n must be equal to 128. So that's our answer for part C of the question and it was worth 10 marks. That is the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.